All right, we are recording now as well. So, so we're going to go ahead and get started. I wanted to welcome all of my panelists and the attendees who are still logging on to the Office of Neighborhood Coordination's Lunch and Learn. This is our latest Lunch and Learn session, a virtual panel discussion we try to have every month on a variety of topics of interest to neighborhood associations and to residents citywide. This month, we are focusing on the work that is done by the Community Policing Council here in the city of Albuquerque. Um, my name is Vanessa Baca. I'm the manager of the Office of Neighborhood Coordination. And as our attendees log on, I'm just gonna take a couple of minutes to go over our web webinar ground rules. Uh, the chat box is available to ask questions. Um, so I would ask our attendees to please, if they have any questions for our panelists, to type them into the chat box. I am moderating the session and I will also be checking the chat box. So if I miss anybody's question, I will try to get back to it as soon as I can. Um, please keep any questions you have specific to the topic we are discussing today and please be respectful of our panelists and uh, of, of our attendees as well. And I will go ahead and I will get started. I will have our panelists each introduce themselves. I will say their first name and they will introduce themselves with their full name their title, the CPC they are affiliated with, and their connection to the CPC. Uh, Annie, we will start with you. Okay, I'm Annie Cook, and I am a member of the Northwest Area Command CPC. I just started in June, so I'm a fairly new member. Well, welcome, and thank you for being part of this discussion. I appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. Lieutenant Garcia. Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Garcia. I'm the lieutenant of our community engagement section. I am the liaison for the department with CPCs. Great. Again, thank you for taking the time. I know you're a very busy, uh, very busy woman. So I, I'm grateful you're a part of this. Thank you. Uh, Idalia. Good afternoon. My name is Idalia Lechuga Tena, and I am a counselor with the Foothills Community Policing Council. And I uh, just joined, well, I was confirmed uh, last month in July. Great, thank you for taking the time, Idalia, I appreciate it. Uh, thank Kelly? you. Kelly? Hello, my name is uh, Kelly K. Mensa. I am the CPC liaison for the city of Albuquerque. Um, my position is that I try to um, give the CPC councils, the six of them, what they need to uh, create better communication, collaboration with APD, with the city and with the community at large. That's great. Kelly, I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. I know you have a very busy schedule, so I'm very grateful. Uh, right. Commander, Commander Sanchez. Hello, uh, my name is uh, Art Sanchez. I am the Northwest Area Commander. Um, one of the, uh, so I'm actually in charge of the community engagement paragraphs for the department uh, prior to the CPCs being moved to the city uh, for a very short time, I oversaw the CPC paragraphs. Uh, they, they were part of the, that community engagement paragraphs. But now a lot of my work with the CPCs, aside from being an area commander, I do a lot of collaboration with them with regards to our APD processes. Um, so I took over the the paragraphs in June, I believe, of last year. Great. Well, again, thank you for taking the time. Um, you know, all of you have such busy schedules. I'm very grateful that you that you're able to participate and bring your expertise to this panel. So, and last but not least, we have Paul Cedillo. Hello, Vanessa, and good afternoon to everyone that's on the call today. My name is Paul Cedillo, and like Adelia, I am also a part of the Foothills CPC, and I've been there about a year now. Great, right. thank you again. Both Paul and Idalia have previously been panelists on some uh, uh, lunch and learns that my office has hosted. So uh, it's nice to have you both back. I, I'm really gl glad you're both here. So thank you. Thank um, you. Thank you. So we will go ahead and get started. Um, I'm gonna start with uh, having Kelly, if he doesn't mind, give a, just a brief overview of the CPCs in general, where, when they started, what the, what the origin of the CPCs is, why they exist, and um, maybe just talk a little bit about, you know, their function here within the city of Albuquerque. Would you, would you mind starting with that, Kelly? Oh, absolutely. Thank you, Vanessa. I'm gonna go over a little background information going back to 2014 here because 
The CPCs have been in operation for almost seven years in November in Albuquerque now. And uh, we, we started with a fairly uh, specific purpose and then we've been working on exactly what that means since then. So basically, um, we had the, the city of Albuquerque had what's called a court approved settlement agreement in November of 2014, in which um, the Department of Justice did an investigation of APD and, and things were not seen as going 100% uh, perfectly. So uh, they did an 18 month investigation and uh, it, it came to light that there were some issues with oversight and training and, and uh, some policies that were uh, contributing to some unreasonable force, force claims that the DOJ considered were uh, in violation of the Fourth Amendment. So, uh, you know, federal civil rights laws ensures that citizens are not going to be deprived of their constitutional rights by government agencies. So uh, some of the findings, and, you know, this is not an indictment of APD, just, just simply the information. So there were a few too many unjustified shootings, unconstitutional uh, use of less lethal force, uh, violations against people suffering from mental illness, and maybe uh, that the, the uh, violations were not isolated or sporadic. So the CASA was negotiated in six months between the city and the DOJ, and they came up with 16 major mandates that included a lot of things. For instance, changes to SWAT protocols, rewriting of the use of force policies, more training, the establishment of a police oversight board, uh, more accountability, lapel cameras, and a lot more. But where we came in, there was one new uh, protocol established that said that the city of Albuquerque needed to establish a civilian advisory panel in each police area command. So the CPCs were born. In 2015, we started having meetings and being a brand new endeavor, we had to figure out a lot of things uh, with hierarchy, with uh, elect, we had to elect officers, we had to decide what the officers were going to do, what sort of meetings we're going to put on, and exactly how the six panels were going to work with each other, which took a while. So um, eventually the CPC established guidelines and uh, the six CPC area command uh, councils were fairly separate from each other. So we established a council of chairs, which brought the six into one unified group. And this is still a work in progress because one thing about the CPCs is they each do their own work. They come up with their own workshops. They decide what is significant to each of them because as we'll discuss later, I'm sure, the neighborhoods of Albuquerque are different, the area commands are different, and the people who live there, live there are different. So. Our motto is basically to communicate, collaborate, and cooperate to encourage consensus building. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is help the city of Albuquerque uh, transition over to community policing. So what does that mean? Well, uh, we are uh, attempting to help the city uh, um, work more on crime prevention than response. Obviously, police have to respond to crimes, but uh, with more neighborhood ties, the police can probably um, work on preventing crime and, and uh, getting to the root of crime rather than just responding. Um, we're also building trust between APD and the community. Mm -hmm. uh, we're looking for more evaluation of civil rights and uh, we're encouraging officers to see the work as an investment in the community, which is what the CPC monthly meetings are. The officers are very gracious with their time as they are here. They, they come on, they give presentations as to what APD does, is doing, and will do in the future, and uh, talk about issues that are not always uh, simple or easy. So uh, that's sort of our mission. Our job is not to overlook APD. That's really what the uh, uh, Citizens Police Oversight Agency is for. We build stronger ties between APD the community and the city government, and we are attempting to help them in some ways with some issues, such as recruiting, such as uh, the ambassador program, which is uh, establishing um, uh, lines together in the community. And uh, we're, we're looking to, to do a lot of separate projects in each of the six community policing councils in which 
we are going to help each other, we're going to help APD, and we are going to keep our neighborhoods safe and patrolled. So we have a pretty big job, I think. Yeah, that is a big job. That's not a small scope of work at all. Fortunately, you have the, you know, I imagine it has, you have to be a very dedicated resident and member of the community to to invest the time in becoming a member of a CPC. So, you know, it sounds like you have a, at least a good start going. Thank you for that. Not that much time. We, I know. We well, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. So I want to segue over to Annie. Um, Annie, you mentioned you are a member of the Northwest Area CPC. And I wanted to ask you as a, as a citizen, how did the CPCs come to your notice and what inspired you to join your CPC as a member? Well, I heard about the CPCs when they were originally created, but at the time I didn't think much about it. And uh, last year I uh, joined the Citizen Police Academy, and that is a 12 week course. It's two nights a week, Tuesday and Thursday from 6 to 9 p.m. And it's uh, put on by the police force and it's at the police academy on 2nd and Montano. And I can't tell you how valuable this was for me. You, the, the um, police department presents, every, every department presents what they do and why. Um, it tells you how our police force is organized. It tells you why they do things. And most importantly, it gives citizens an opportunity to ask any question you want. And believe me, I asked a few really dumb questions. <laughs> and uh, anything you wanted to know about policing in Albuquerque and why it happens and how it happens. And I just felt like this was just one of the most valuable things I've, I've ever done. And I have a, a my son-in-law is a sergeant for the Austin Police Department. Okay. And I don't want to ruin every family gathering by bugging him about well, why <laughs> this or why do you, you know, making him talk shop. But um, during the course of, of that program, the um, community policing council sent people to talk to us about what they do and why they do it. And I became very interested. And as because of this, the uh, Citizen Police Academy, I decided I would like to join because I feel it's very important for the police force to understand what the community would like to see and for us to understand what, what our police force is up against when they go out in the street every day to literally lay down their life for us and they don't know us. Um, and I felt it's, it's very important as a citizen for us to have input and not to tell the police what to do, but to, to have input about what we feel is important and understand what they feel is important and how is, it's important for them to do their job without hesitation. And um, I, I just feel like it's all around a beneficial experience for anybody who wants to join. And it's, it's fairly easy to join. And um, I, I just feel like I'm still benefiting from this. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's a very inspiring story. You have me thinking about the Citizens Police Academy now. I'm like, hmm, maybe I, maybe I should. I'll, I'll give you the credit for it if I do it, Annie. But thank you for that. How, how do you find, I'm going to segue a little bit back to what you said. How do you find it? How exactly do the CPCs function in terms of their civilian members? interacting with police officers, but specific to CPCs. And that's something I'd like uh, both Paul and Idalia to answer as well. Well, I feel like um, it gives me an opportunity to get to know the, the officers that work in my area. It gives me an opportunity to, um, I've gotten to meet them um, whenever they had, they had a coffee with the cop in June, and I probably wouldn't have known about that had I not been a member of the CPC because I'm not very up to date, but I feel like it's so important for us to know who represents us in the community in our police force. And this is a really good way to do that. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for that, Annie. 
Paul, I know you are uh, work in a um, in a kind of a neighborhood safety liaison with your uh, with the community group as well as being on the CPC. What has your experience been in working in kind of tying those two roles together? And how did you come to get involved with your CPC? Um, so that's a good question. Um, CPC was first, and then my neighborhood association um, was second. Uh, so the CPC actually. Um, I work at Sandy National Laboratories and it, it came up with an individual there and they mentioned it. They weren't all part of CPC, but they mentioned that this was an organization. Um, and if I had some time, that would be something I'd be interested in. And right away, I knew it would be. It's, it's not just about uh, trying to um, do what's best for the city or uh, my neighborhood or my family, but it's about learning more the insight I get from being a part of the CPC and going to these meetings and seeing the emails back and forth mm -hmm. is I've, I've learned a hundredfold from what I knew. I thought I knew about APD and the city and um, our community. And, and I learned so much more now. And so I can be an advocate uh, for the city and for APD and for what's, the, what's right in community policing because of, that experience and that insight that I have in that open line of communication, um, which is great. The open line of communication between the CPC and the neighborhood and APD is, is fantastic. And I would highly recommend that. Um, okay. it, my neighborhood association saw an opportunity to say, well, maybe you could be a good security individual for our association. And, and it made sense to me as well. And so I was able to do both. Um, and I have two young boys and so, like Annie was saying, you know, everyone can be involved, um, no matter what age group, no matter where you're at in your life. Yes, it's a commitment, but it's a commitment that I think we all could um, spend some time uh, participating in. Sure. And it's, it's just represents another way that people can be involved in their community. It's another, it's not it's quite the same as being in a neighborhood association. It's a, the functionality is different, it seems, but it's another way of being connected. So that's great, Paul. I appreciate you giving that perspective. And speaking of neighborhood association, Vidalia, you are the president of your neighborhood association at La Mesa. I was wondering how you, and I know you are um, with the Foothills uh, CPC, those are two different areas. How have you found it possible to kind of work kind of cohesively between your role as a neighborhood association president and a CPC member? And is there ways that you're able to connect those two roles? Yes, yeah, so I think, um you know, being, I'm actually in two neighborhood associations, right? I also serve on the, on the um, um, Glenwood Hills Neighborhood Association as a board member. And I, yes, I am president of La Mesa Community Improvement Association. Um, and, you know, it, it, it is vital that it's, it starts with the community and your neighbors, right? Because who knows what's happening every day, day to day, you know, the, the criminal activity that unfortunately is happening throughout the city. It starts with um, talking to your neighbors, mm -hmm. attending your neighborhood associations. And, and that is why I um, decided to join CPC um, uh, because unfortunately, all of us um, are dealing with the crime crisis in our city. And instead of complaining, I thought to myself, well, what can I do as a community um, person, as a, as, a, as a neighborhood association advocate what can I do to, to help our community, to keep our family safe? And then also, uh, how do we work together to um, fight our crime crisis? And how do we help APD uh, uh, combat crime? So yes. that is the, the main reason why I joined, because unfortunately, um, I've been a, a victim of property crime. In this area, the Foothills um, area, the number one issue is crime, like the city, right? Number one issue is crime, unfortunately. But in this area is property crime. Uh, we had our uh, vehicle broken into while we were at mass um, just down the street uh, at a Catholic church. Anyhow, so what I love, uh, and you know, a bunch of stuff was stolen and, and it's unfortunate, right? Property crime. But I love, um, I've learned a lot in community policing uh, from my short time there. Now I've started attending the meeting since January and um, I was being vetted for a few months and I was confirmed in July. And, you know, it's just, it, it, it's such a huge difference um, 
just getting to know, you know, who your commander is, what the issues are, how do we work together as a community, and not only with the neighborhood associations, but also with um, our other counselors, like Counselor um, Cedillo here, how do we work together on on uh, targeting the issues uh, that are specific to the area, right? Mm -hmm. In our case, I could tell you one big issue was um, uh, racing because we have, you know, tramway, we have Montgomery, uh, and there's a lot of racing, and it's it's caused a lot of accidents. It's caused, um, uh, uh, you know, fatal accidents, and we were able to get a, a small committee on racing and because we had a lot of young um, young uh, kids uh, high schoolers that were racing and they you know they would they would not be careful yeah. <laughs> anyway uh, and it was very bad because it, it's, a, it's a very organized group of street racers we were able to talk to our commander and we were able to get cops uh, because they would have different areas that they would uh, congregate and um, and start their racing uh, parties, and we were able to to do that um, actually, and 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 uh, decrease that significantly, where we don't see them anymore. So, um, yeah, that's great. And I like that. That's a very concrete example of working with a CPC and in, in integrating that work with the neighborhood association to actively address a specific crime problem. I also like what you said about bringing a positive attitude to the table, like instead of being, instead of complaining, bringing, you know, thinking of how you can help. And I, I, I like that attitude because that's something that I try to work, uh, that I try to help with our neighborhood association groups is to, you know, to try and approach problems sort of from as pro proactive a viewpoint as possible. You know, it's, it is easy to complain and we've all done it, but it's a lot harder to come to the table with two or three positive specific suggestions of how things could be improved and I think that's a really good, and I, I think that's how the CPCs tie in with the work that APD does is they, you know, they, mm -hmm. they or I'm sure they try, they, they work very hard to bring as much positive suggestions to the table as they possibly can. So thank you for that, Idalia. I appreciate that. Uh, Lieutenant Garcia and Commander, Ar Commander Sanchez, I was wondering if you all could talk a little bit about the specific roles that you both, um, that your roles, think how they engage with the CPCs. Well, um, I, for me as a commander, uh, obviously I have two roles for the CPC, one as an area commander and the other uh, in with the, the work that I do with community engagement. Uh, but one thing I do want to say before we get started, I want to thank everybody on here, the panelists that are here, and especially I want to thank Annie, Paul, and Dahlia, and those who are part of these boards because we can't forget the fact that these are voluntary. Yeah. These are positions where, where you have come up and said, you know, my community is that important that I am going to get involved and I'm going to do it without getting paid. I'm going to do it because it is important. My neighborhood's important. My community is important and our city is important. So again, thank you for doing that. Um, so uh, I, I, with that, my, my role in my, what I do with the community uh, policing councils is being that representative of the area commander and the department while we're working to create, build those relationships. Because really at the end of the day, what this is about is about building those relationships mm -hmm. through the CPCs and our neighborhood associations. The department is building those relationships with the community because we serve the community and you are that representative. And really I look at it as a voice for that community to be able to bring those concerns from them to us and be able to um, provide those recommendations and really ensure that we as a department are transparent in what we're doing and that we're doing our job in serving that community. So that's where we have to have, uh, where we as area commanders have to answer to you in the CPCs. And, and really, again, it's about building that relationship yeah. with the community. Thank you, Commander. And Lieutenant Garcia? Yeah, and I want to echo um, what Commander Sanchez said about uh, volunteering. It certainly means a lot to us because 
we all live here. You know, my family lives here. When I go home, I am a community member. And when I leave this place, I want to know that, you know, my police department is serving me as a community member. So thank you for what you do. My role, well, I have multiple roles right now, but I oversee our community engagement sections. With that, I know that Kelly had mentioned the ambassador program. One of the things we do is we created, well, the chief created a new program where we have representatives for, to work with underrepresented community members who possibly haven't had a voice with us in the past to interact with them. And a lot of those um, attend the CPCs. They will be attending more. Um, also recruiting, one of the things that the CPCs are supposed to focus on is helping us recruit for the department. And I oversee recruiting also. That is something that we can't do alone, nor do we want that. We don't want to do it alone because our department needs to represent our community and who better to tell us who they want to see serving them than the community. So we look to the CPCs for help. Um, I know both Annie and Paul mentioned that they had learned so much by attending the CPA. And that's wonderful, but one of the benefits that we have from attending the CPCs is we get to learn from our community. We do things, we have our procedures, our protocols, we do things every day that are normal to us because we've been doing them for, for me almost 19 years. Um, and sometimes we forget because it's so natural and ingrained in us, we forget how it may be perceived by the community or how they may not understand the reason and to take a minute to share that information with them. So every moment we get to share with the CPCs, to learn from them, um, I know a lot of them have presentations where we get to answer questions and that's a benefit and then also get feedback. Um, the final thing I would say is that it is the an opportunity for city councilors, community, the department to all be in one location at one time to work together to improve our city. And that's a huge benefit. I, I agree. And you make a good point, Lieutenant, about being able to interact with city councilors in that sense, because, you know, as we all know, the city councilors are pulled in so many different directions with the, all the different types of legislation that they deal with. Um, so to have a city councilor be present at a CPC, that seems like that would be very beneficial because it means that their energy, that their focus is going to be specific to the topics that are on hand with that CPC. I think that's a great idea. It's a good suggestion for, you know, to, to include your city councilor in your CPC. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Um, the next question I'm going to, I'm going to probably ask all of you to, to tie in, to, to contribute to this, but I want to start with Paul. Um, Paul, as a, as a citizen, but somebody who does work with your neighborhood quite a bit, what have you, what has been your experience with having people in the community have any misperceptions about a CPC and what, did you have any misperceptions about it before you joined and what, maybe what have been some of the bigger surprises or things that you weren't expecting that you've learned as a result of being on your CPC? Yeah, I think when I, even when I came in and I've heard from others is, um, it was like an oversight. We are oversight over um, the APD individuals that are coming in to talk with us. Um, we're watching out for them. We're telling them what they're doing wrong. Nope, it wasn't that at all. It's it's not that. And I, I want to encourage that it's not. It is. And Commander Sanchez gets it. It's a relationship. You're building a good relationship. Our commander, Commander Collins, um, for National Night Out, he came to my house. He came in, he talked to my neighbors, he talked to me. It felt like we were just um, almost friends, right? And, and, and it, was, it was nice to have that communication um, that is built over time. Like I said, I've been there um, approaching a year now and it's growing. It's, it's getting better and better the longer I'm in it. Um, and I think that's, that's fantastic. So um, it's not just about, hey, let's come in for a few months and do your best because you will do great. But the longer you're in it, um, I think, the more you're going to gain um, from that. So um, really good news um, on that front. And honestly, if there's individuals on this call or watching this 
And if you can't commit to being a part of the CPC, I think that's okay. But just attending the CPC meetings within your area is just as important. Um, we're averaging anywhere from 50 to 60 that attend ours. We would love to see that grow to 100 plus um, because there's an advantage of not just watching, but you get to add to the chat. You get to tell us about um, some of your questions, your concerns. We'll bring that to the panel right away. We try to bring all, every question that comes up, we try to bring that to the panel. You're gonna have your question answered by a commander, by a city representative. We have a lot of individuals that come to meetings um, from a lot of different areas, not just APD. Um, and so it, there's a lot of benefit and value of just these two. Okay, that's terrific. That's good. I, I definitely wanted to, to address that. That's a question that I get quite a bit in my um, interactions with neighborhood folks is that there is a perception among some people in the community that the CPC's function is, is like an oversight or they're there to report on, on what people are doing. And it's good to hear that that's not the case. Um, Idalia, I wanted to ask you the same thing. What, you know, what, have, did you have any kind of misperceptions before you started working with your CPC? And you know, how, how did you deal with those or how have you been able to dispel any kind of misperceptions among your community groups or with your neighborhood folks? So when I first started with CPC, I, I wanted to join, right? Uh, but I thought you had to had taken the um, uh, Citizens Police Academy first, and that was a requirement in the past, right? But it was changed, I believe, and, and maybe Kelly can correct me if, if I'm wrong. So I thought that you had to um, uh, had taken, you know, the course, and it's a commitment, like um, Annie said, um, but that was changed. So if people are interested in joining the Community Policing Council, that is not a requirement anymore. Um, I still want to do the, the Community Policing, um, uh, the Citizens Academy. I mean, I want to do that because it's always good, right? You, there's always so much to learn, right? Education never stops especially when it comes to com uh, combating crime. Um, so that's a good thing in case people didn't know. Um, and the other thing is, uh, I, I, do, I do agree with Paul, um, you know, there, there was a lot of people that would come to the meetings and, and would just vent and think that, you know, we could fix everything because we were overseeing the police department and that was, that's inaccurate. So, um, Little by little, people did learn that you know. Yes, you can come and 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 maybe vent and complain, but offer solutions, offer uh, ways that we can work together. You know, yes, it's great that you bring the issue uh, that's you know that's important to you. Absolutely, we'll listen to that, but do it in a positive manner of how we're going to work together with APD. APD is already out there risking their lives every day. Uh, you know, especially with our crime crisis that we're facing right now, and this is a time to work together. Great, let's, you know, uh, have a dialogue, but let's have a diplomatic dialogue and not, you know, vent and maybe be negative. And, mm -hmm. and that's, that's what we, what I dealt with a little bit. Sure, no, that's great. Thank you for that, Idalia. Um, I wanted to ask Commander uh, Sanchez and Lieutenant Garcia about what their experiences, maybe from the opposite viewpoint, um, did you have, did you run into any potential uh, misperceptions about CPCs from the law enforcement standpoint? Yes, I, I think there is. I think there's a, I, I don't think it's as uh, big as it used to be, but I know within the first few years, there was a big uh, misconception and this view from the officers that, okay, the CPCs, not only do we have, we have the CPOA, we have the POB, we have, you know, IA and all these, all these yeah. acronyms, all this alphabet too. <laughs> yeah, that 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 they're yeah that, that that are looking at us as police officers and they're trying and now we have the CPC that's going to tell us this is what you need to do and it was a misconception where the when where the real that's not the reality at all the uh, it's really um, the opposite of that it is about working with the department and the CPCs helping collaborate. Uh, and how we're going to solve the community, help solve some of the community problems, because Lieutenant Garcia mentioned that we're not going to, we're not going to fix anything, everything. We, we are not going to be able to fix everything by ourselves. And that in the past had been something that, you know, with the officers that would be like, well, we, it's our job to fix this and this, and, and, it, and it, uh, it's not. But um, there was the issue that you would run into with the officers because 
they felt that there was another area. And, and at the beginning, we did have challenges. We had challenges from the CPC. They had their challenges. Uh, I started going to those meetings as a lieutenant. Uh, and APD had their challenges because there was two different viewpoints as to what, you know, what the whole, uh, you know, the CPC's real mission was. And, and, and so uh, throughout the years, we started doing better because of those relationships. So we did see that we're seeing uh, it's much, much better now. I think there's a lot better understanding, definitely from the commanders, uh, because I, I, I you know, my experience, I just came back to the field as field commander in December. Uh, so in a sense, it's still new to me. I had the experience as a lieutenant, uh, but it's still new to me as a commander. But I think we have a very, very good relationship. Not In my area command, I think we have an excellent relationship, uh, not only with the CPCs. I know that Eric and I, you know, we, we talk. Uh, pretty often about things that are going on in the, yeah. uh, the uh, CPP and within the department. Uh, and we get ahead of things as soon as possible. I know we had a, you know, a few weeks ago or a month ago, uh, there was a thing with the, with the, uh, with the, uh, one of the uh, newspapers that had put something out about what the department was doing to address recommendations from the CPC and things like that. But we were able to, because of that relationship, get on top of it. And now we're working on making sure that we create that process. Uh, and something else that has changed is that in the past, and I'm a big believer in uh, that we, APD or the city should not be telling the community what they need. And that's one thing that we should not. And I think that has changed and we're still changing a lot of that mentality because we are here to serve. And that is, that is why we are in this position because we are here to serve. Mm -hmm. We are public servants. In the past, it was that idea that we need to tell the CPCs, you know, this is how you need to provide a recommendation. This is what you need to do. This is, and, and it's not it. It should be, what can we do to help make your process better? What can we do as a department to improve communication? How, what is it that we can do to help you? With what issues you may have and how are we gonna address those issues that are in our purview to address? So I think it's, it's changed from the first CPC that I went to back in, I believe it was 2015, mm -hmm. uh, 2016 something. And, it, it's changed, and I think it, we have yeah. made big strides. Good to know. Um, I have a question for you, Kelly, but I see Idalia has her hand up, so we'll go to Idalia first, and then we'll switch to Kelly. Thank you, Vanessa. I just want to make, a, a, I guess, a point of clarification so that people listening can understand, because I didn't understand this before, but now I do. And I want to share that with with everyone watching today. So, you know, the councils, the, the, the community policing councils, we are completely independent from the city and the department. Right. So uh, and, and what we do is we're encouraged to uh, recommend changes right uh, to the police department. Uh, on policies and procedures, right? But always working uh, in a friendly manner and having a frank uh, dialogue, right? Always at all times. And, and you know, so we, we make recommendations um, and we identify concerns, we identify problems, um, you know, successes, opportunities with, within our area command, right? Um, and for the department as a whole. That's, that's just my point of clarification that I wanted to, for people listening, thank you. No, that's a very good point and a good reminder. I actually had forgotten that myself, that the CPCs do, they're not, they're not under APD, they're not under the city, they are, they're their own, you know, their, their own entity, their own group. So that's a very good, uh, good reminder, Idalia. So, you know, for those of you who are out there thinking about, you know, if that was the reason not to join your CPC, well, now you know, you heard it from, you heard it from a member herself. So, Kelly, I wanted to ask you a couple of things. Um, one of the things that Annie had mentioned is um, that the different CPCs address different issues because they're in different neighborhoods and different neighborhoods have different concerns. What are some examples of some of some different concerns that different CPCs address and how do they how do they go about working with each other to kind of share ideas that they're not sort of having to reinvent the wheel? Okay. Uh, if, if I can go backward for one second. Sure. Uh, 
Ali had talked earlier about Citizens Policing Academy and also the ride along. Before I started, which was in January of this year, eight months ago, those were requirements to be on the uh, community policing councils. Because of COVID, uh, APD took a break last year in doing those sort of things. Um, so ride alongs were difficult and the uh, Citizens Policing Academy uh, had been placed on, on the shelf for a while. So they were no longer requirements to be a, a community policing member. And um, because of the amount of time it takes to go through the uh, CPA, we're, we're discussing right now as to whether they should be requirements. And uh, one of the issues with the ride-alongs was that the CPCs want to be, uh, want to be open to anyone who wants to join. Now, uh, one of the requirements of a ride-along is you have to do a background check because if you have an outstanding warrant, you get into a police car, obviously, that's probably not going to work out that well for you. So we do have uh, community policing members, just to let people know, who have run afoul of the law before, who have done things probably in their youth in which they weren't supposed to do, and that's no longer a requirement. We just want you to have some sort of desire to help your community now. We're looking for people of all sorts of backgrounds obviously uh, sex and gender and race and, and uh, economic background, and having people who haven't been perfectly, um, uh, totally perfect their entire life is going to only benefit the CPC. So the ride along uh, requirement is no longer um, uh, necessary to be a, a CPC member. As for your question, um, yes, Albuquerque Six Community P Policing Councils Northeast, Northwest, Southeast, Southwest, Foothills and Valley are very different. And, and the uh, groups of people that make up these neighborhoods are different. Obviously the challenges and the uh, concerns up in the foothills would be different in the Valley, which comprises North Valley, downtown and uh, part, parts of the South Valley. We've got a very strange uh, uh, policing command map. I'm actually where I live in the South Valley is actually two blocks south of APD jurisdiction. When someone gets comes to my house, it's a county sheriff. So, you know, that's, that's just the way it is. I'm not sure how, the, how, how these lines were come up with. I'm sure it was a person much smarter than I am who came up with this plan, but uh, that, that's the way it goes. So um, there are different challenges. For instance, in the Valley, you're going to get a lot of people who don't speak English, right? So that's going to um, have, a, have issues um, and concerns that would not happen in other councils. Uh, in the Northwest, you, you have a lot, lot more open space, probably less businesses and more uh, citizens and, and uh, housing concerns, right? In the Foothills, which has been a very active council, we've got the central area from Eubank to Tramway in which there's a lot of homeless activity mm -hmm. and um, a, lo a lot of activity with people who are not uh, quite where they want to be in life. So there's that. In the international district, which is the southeast, you're going to have problems with a lot of people who uh, have, have arrived in Albuquerque recently. And this is the highest crime area in Albuquerque. So you're going to have problems with that. Um, northeast, you get a mixture of the southeast and you get a mixture of foothills with, with central and with, with uh, street racing and mm -hmm some of these concerns. And the community policing councils have taken on the personalities of the people in the councils and especially of the council chairs. We have elections once a year in which we elect a council chair and a co-chair if the, if the uh, council decides that that's necessary. And they each live in these particular councils in which they serve and they know what the community concerns are, and they work accordingly um, because they've been there for a while. Generally, they're homeowners, they live there. Now, let me say one other thing. You do not have to live in a council in order to be a council member. You have to live or work in one of the area commands. So, um, for instance, yeah, you. if you work downtown and you live in the foothills, you say, well, I'm downtown all the time. I'd like to see some of these issues with what happens on Friday and Saturday nights 
and be a part of that, well, that's fine. You can apply to the Downtown Policing Council. So uh, there is a lot of um, a lot of work to be done and a lot of smart uh, people who are working on it to uh, make bring the neighborhoods into a uh, consensus as to what we're going to be doing next, what are the issues we face, and how are we going to work on these issues. Great. No, thank you for that, Kelly. That's good information to, to remember. And I didn't actually realize that you could possibly join a CPC, CPC in an area that you did not necessarily live in. So that's that's a good thing to remember. I think, uh, I think all of this, all of these these things are good for people to know. Um, you know that the, a lot of the questions that my office gets just about you know CPCs and community policing in general seem to tie around their ability to you know either be able to join a particular CPC or what the time commitment is or if there are restrictions on who can join it. So I'm really glad that you're addressing these questions, Kelly. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. I wanted to ask Annie. Annie has a as a volunteer for your CPC, what if you were going to try and get another individual or to join, what would you say are the benefits and what would you say other than what you've talked about before and what would you say is the, the volunteer time commitment in general so people sort of have an expectation of that? Well, I'm retired and I, I feel that the time commitment is not onerous. I attend a meeting once a month and we get a lot of emails. There's a lot of reading material. We uh, recently went over use of force policies and looked at those and had our input. Um, and then now we're starting up with, with uh, committees. So in addition to being on the CPC, you can also serve on a committee of your choice. Um, and I just feel that you can probably put as much into it as you want to. And the, the more the better. You know, I think it, it's good for people to really have a passion for this and be committed to their community and be committed to uh, working with the police on issues that are important to the community and also issues that are important to our police force. You know, and um, so I, I, I just feel that Overall, it's a very, very rewarding experience. You know, you get to know people that um, I would have never come into contact with, you know, like Commander Sanchez. He's a very important part of our Northwest Area Command, and I probably would never have crossed paths with him. Uh, and a lot of the people that present at the committee meetings, you know, it's a, it's just a very valuable opportunity from my point of view for the community to get to positively interact with our police force, as um, people have said earlier, and uh, not just complain and say, well, you know, I wish they'd do this or I wish they'd do that and actually have a voice. And, um, I'd just like to also say, I know Commander Sanchez and, and Lieutenant Garcia have thanked us for being here, but I wanna thank them for their efforts as well. And I wanna thank our entire police force because literally these are people that don't know us who are ready to lay down their lives to protect us every day. And I think that right now with everything that's going on nationwide, Things are changing. The way the police operate, you know, is changing. Mm -hmm. The way the community feels about the police is changing. And I would like to see that be a very positive change mm -hmm. for everyone, for our officers and for our community. And, and the CPC is the perfect way to do this. Yeah, that's a very good point you make. Um, I think a lot of times in our, in our community, unfortunately, so many people's first contact with the police department is is in a negative context and that some, oftentimes can set the tone for future interaction. So I, I'm glad you made that point, Annie, that, you know, CPC is, it does represent sort of a neutral place where anybody can go to and have a, you know, beneficial interaction with the uh, law enforcement. So thank you for that reminder. I appreciate it. Um, Lieutenant Garcia, I wanted to ask you about your specific uh, interactions with the different CPCs. 
What has been your experience in working from a community outreach aspect specific to law enforcement with the CPCs? What have you found to be the most beneficial uh, aspects of your position in terms of working with the CPCs? And thank you for that. And just so you know, um, my current role as being the police department liaison with the CPCs is fairly new. Okay. However, one of the things is that it's, and I think Commander San just mentioned it, it's about building relationships. So if there is something that is going on, outreach events, um, places where law enforcement can be represented, where we can set up recruiting booths, mm -hmm. um, working with schools, it's a great place to go ahead and make those relationships, build those relationships, develop partnerships, and help the police department engage with the community more on a personal level as opposed to an enforcement level. Okay. Like generally we're called when people need us. We're called when there's a crime and something horrible has happened. This gives us an opportunity to be there on a positive note and really just engage and learn more about who we serve. Yeah. Okay, thank you for that. that, that that's a good point to make, make. I, I, I appreciate that. Paul, I wanted to ask you from your viewpoint and your CPC, what are, what are CPCs in general? And maybe this is something I can also address to Commander Sanchez and to Kelly. What are CPCs doing to try and ensure that there's a lot more um, equity and inclusivity and diversity in the CPCs now as, 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 as they've been part of the community for a longer amount of time? Um, well, first off, our CPC, we just recently um, are, are full. So we have, uh, we're at capacity right. for our CPC, which is fantastic because when I first started, um, there was just a few of us, and um, we even with the small amount we had, we we were we were committed to to grow um, and to try to include um, all of the community, be, be very inclusive, be very diverse, and so that's just something we've done from the beginning. And as we continued our meetings, um, we we grew our membership. Uh, I know Kelly helps push that. Every Kelly's at all of our meetings, and he's always putting something in the notes. Say, hey, if you're if you're interested, please let us know. Um, you know, pretty much everyone's welcome. And so we started to get applications, which is fantastic. Um, and as a team, we came together, we review these applications, um, and we re we really only focus on what are, are those individuals passionate about being a part of this, helping. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're looking for. And just by focusing on that, we have a very diverse um, and a very inclusive CPC, um, which I believe um, encompasses a lot of the different, uh, really all of what the foothills represent. And it's a lot, we, we cover a lot. And so we have individuals from far north tramway and we have individuals right in the heart of tramway, central and Wantabo mm -hmm. and, and everywhere in between. And I think that's a good thing. And so we're hearing about um, the whole area as um, in the foothills. And I, and I think that's how we can best respond um, to the needs of the community. And, and that's why we are definitely one of the, the CPCs that um, is, is trying to do as much as we possibly can, because we know there's, um, there's a lot of us and we actually make an impact. And I think we're starting to make that impact, which is exciting. It feels good. It feels good to actually see results from um, being a part of these initiatives. That's awesome. I, I want to ask Kelly about this, but that ties in with what you're talking about, Paul. Um, a few people have mentioned to me that during COVID, which I guess we're still kind of in the, in the whole COVID pandemic still, but the use of um, Zoom cameras and Zoom has really uh, created a great opportunity to expand membership in the CPCs. And I was wondering if uh, Kelly and Commander Sanchez might be able to talk a little bit about that. Well, I started in January of this year, as I said earlier, and every CPC meeting since I've been here has been uh, online. Mm -hmm. um, we have discussed at various times this summer, going back to doing in-person meetings, but it seems like the uh, the 
the climate changes every week with the uh, situation we're in now. So it's just difficult to make these long-term plans. We may still attempt to do that this fall. There are a couple of uh, a couple of CPCs that have brought that up as a possibility. We're not sure about that. Um, previous to me for about six months, there was no one in my position. And that was when we went to in-person meetings, middle of last year. And before that, all CPC meetings were in person. Mm -hmm. We'd go to a uh, library meeting room or a community center, and we'd do the best we could, could through uh, Nextdoor or a variety of apps to get the information out there. And the police and the CPC members and everyone would show up and answer questions and, and speak to each other in person. Um, the future at some point, what we're looking at is going to be hybrid meetings in which I set up a camera, we have a couple of microphones, and we're doing an in-person meeting just for the feeling of, of the warmth and the, and the community relation. And uh, we will also be broadcasting on Zoom. That might cut down our in-person membership, obviously, because people get a little spoiled just doing this online and you know, <laughs> clicking on and drinking a beer off camera while they're not. <laughs> Well, they're not on camera. None of us have ever done that, have we? No. <laughs> but, you know, and, and it is it is pretty easy. But we're trying to bring this into a hybrid situation in which we can accommodate both parties because we have had the entire gamut of, of opinion on this from, no, I don't want to go back to in-person right now, to, to attendees who used to, used to go to the in-person meetings who now say, uh, no, I, you know, I'm not going to be involved until we go back to in person. So it goes all the way across. But this is definitely a recruiting tool and getting back to diversity for a second. Um, my goal, one of my goals as CPC liaison is to increase diversity. And this is one of our five um, committees, the, the membership diversity committee. Right now, I think we have a good mix of people. We have uh native americans we have african americans male and female we have latinos of a few different heritages we have you know obviously a immigrants. Lot of what's that immigrants I'm that's immigrant. right yeah we, we do have immigrants and the one thing i'd like to increase now is a little more age diversity and a little more income diversity because um if you've done any volunteer work in the past, you realize that a certain type of people generally show up to volunteer work. Those are people who are settled, generally maybe retired, and have the time and uh, the, the wherewithal to do this. They're a little older because they don't have kids at home. They may have you know, kids who are out doing things. They may have a, only a dog or a cat to take care of. So they have plenty of time for this to facilitate a meeting. and. This is the membership in a lot of uh, a, a lot of organizations that do this sort of community work. But I think we've been very lucky as far as this goes. And the only real requirement to being a CPC member right now is that you have to be 18. We're even voting on this because there has been some discussion as to whether we'd like to involve high schoolers. Um, you know, I, there are mixed opinions on this. My knowing high schoolers, you know, you, de you definitely have to find the right ones. But um, we want to get younger people organized into caring about their neighborhoods, into working in the wherewithal of the city of Albuquerque, and into making uh, changes because that's what we are. We are a change organization. We make recommendations as to APD as to uh, what we think and what our viewers think and what our attendees and our members think are important recommendations to move forward with our policing in the local areas. I'll give you one example. In Andy's uh, uh, council, the Northwest, Eric Jackson and the chairs and the uh, council members have just passed a recommendation to uh, unify all all police cars so they all look alike. We have three or four different schemes on police vehicles in Albuquerque, and that may be a little confusing to people. So the recommendation was we wanted to unify all police vehicles in Albuquerque. Chief Medina responded to this directly in his own from his own email address. He says, it's a great idea. We can't do it right now, but we're going to work in that direction in the future. So 
that's going to be an important step. Sounds like a minor thing, but when you can flag down a police vehicle, you know what they all look like. It's probably an important thing, right? So this is just one example of what we do as to making community change, as to bringing everyone involved into making this community change, and as to uh, possibly making it stick in Albuquerque for the long term. Right, Kelly, I, I, that's a, I never thought about that before with in terms of the police vehicles, but that makes a lot of sense. And that, that actually leads me into the final question that I'm gonna ask and um, kind of wanna address this to Commander Sanchez and to Lieutenant Garcia. So what, what do CPCs not do that is an APD function that is maybe something that people don't realize? So um, what, one of the things is that it has, uh, one, and it goes back to the misconception that the CPCs are there to tell APD, this is what you need to do, and that APD has to do those things. Again, it's a collaboration. It is a, the CPCs are there, they'll make a recommendation, and we have the ability to say, you know, that is, that is, a good recommendation we we need you know that's something that we can definitely do or we can say no that's not uh or the, but this is why we don't and it's that it's that interaction that that is really what support what how the um the process is supposed to work now i i would like to go back a little bit if i can about the what we're talking about um the meetings and the the how uh, uh, how COVID affected the meetings. I would tell you that we look back a lot of times and look at how certain things happen. And and during that time, uh, last year was was it was a hard, it was hard times for a lot of people. Yeah, a, a lot of people. It did affect the, the community meetings. It affected the CPCs. But there's always positives that came out of this. And I can tell you, with regards to attendance in the CPCs, having been at some of the CPCs before. I do believe it, 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 it did increase the attendance for the CPCs. Mm -hmm. That is a win. And it also forced us as a department, as a city, to get out of the, well, this is how we do it all the time. It forced us to do things differently and it allowed us to involve other members of the community. Um, my, uh, you know, for me, when we started discussing how we're gonna, you know, how the CPCs are gonna go back and my recommendation is always that we do both. Now we do have the in-person. So is it going to reduce that? You know, the in-person attendance probably, but it is a small price to pay if it's going to increase the rest of our attendance. If we are going to be able to get people to be there, because at the end of the day, our success, our success as a CPC and as a department, when we're talking about community engagement, our success has to be measured not only on how we're reducing crime, but on the number of citizens that show up. Yeah. to voice, whether it's their concerns with APD, that is how we have to measure our success when it comes to community engagement. Even if it means we get more people to come in and say, you know what, APD, you are doing something wrong. And it's important for us to remember that. One other thing that we talked about when Kelly was talking about diversity. Now, one of the things that I'm, you know, that the city did and, and that, you know, that everybody did with the ordinance was that, hey, in the past, there was a requirement about a criminal background check, right? And how that was done, and, and uh, me personally, I'm, I'm glad that was taken away because we have to realize, especially as a department, that we are destined to fail if we only allow individuals who may be thinking the way that we are because that's how ships sink. And you don't have individuals that disagree with us, that's where we fail. Yeah. And it is important. And the reason I bring that up is because when we're talking about bringing in uh, our, our youth and bringing in those individuals that we as a department had an effect on, meaning somebody who had a bump in the road and ended up doing something, ended up getting charged with the, you know, and going, going to jail or going through the criminal justice system. It's important that we hear from them too. Now I know there's, you know, there's other requirements within the ordinance, but it is important if we're talking about diversity that we include and represent 
them and hear their voices because they are, were also affected by things that we did. Um, so that, you know, that I, I just wanted to make sure that I pointed that out. So the rest of the, the, the uh, that attendees on here who may have had a bump in the road know that, hey, you know what? You can be part of the CPC so you can voice and help us with those changes that we need to make, especially, especially when it comes to police and citizen encounters. Because at the end of the day, we do. We, our, our priority as a police department throughout the world, here, anywhere else, the number one priority is public safety. That's just, that, the, that is the number one priority. Yeah. But how we do that and how we treat the community and how we get to reducing those numbers has to be a factor in it too, because it is important. Yeah. So, well, you, sorry, you are, that's okay. No, no, I, I know that's great. I mean, you know, you make a good point when you say you want your, your CPCs, just like you want your alpha, you want the police department to be reflective of the diversity of our community. I mean, that you're not gonna get, you're not gonna make any progress if you have the same people engaged at the same level all the time. You want to expand opportunities for people that maybe didn't realize they could be a part of the CPC or, or you know, become involved in, in some other group. So no, that's a very good point that you make. Um, before we wrap up, could I ask all of you to type your contact information into the chat so our attendees can have it just in case they need to reach out to any of us with questions? I've already typed mine and Idalia has done hers as well. So, and I, I think Lieutenant Garcia did as well. So this maybe is just a general question for all of you. So say you're interacting with somebody who has a negative perception of, of the police and the CPCs in general and just says, well, what's in it for me? Why should I join? What, how would you respond? Paul, we'll start with you. Put, we'll put you on the hot seat. <laughs> um, so why should they? Re why should anybody respond? Is that, that that's what you're asking? Yeah. Like why would they join CPC? Yeah. Honestly, you do actually. What you do matters. It's not just going to meetings. Um, you see results, uh, and it might take a little bit. For I didn't see results right off the bat, but as the team came together. Um, and we worked hard together to, to work with the community, to work with the APD, to really understand the issues. And I think that's first and foremost, we had to under, understand the issues and, and come together on that. And then when we make these recommendations to actually see some of those things um, follow through, that was fantastic. And then of course, um, we're always, we should always be learning. We should always um, increase knowledge. And this is a great way to do that, to really understand the ins and outs of the city and APD and, and those relationships that happen throughout the city. Great, thank you. Idalia? Um, so um, I would say, you know, we all want to see change in regards to our crime crisis in Albuquerque. And, and what I say to, to those maybe thinking about joining is, if you want to see the change, be the change, right? So join CPC. And the only way to do that and the most impactful way is actually getting involved in, 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 in a small, um, starting with your, like your neighborhood association with your CPC. Then later on, you know, if you, you know, want to run for office, you know, do whatever you want. But the, the main change happens in little groups, like with your neighborhood association with uh, CPC. And, and, and that is my advice. Be the change you want to see. Thank you. I appreciate that. Annie? What would you say to somebody who, who would ask you, well, what, what, what's it gonna, what, what's it gonna do for me? Why should I join a CPC? Well, I think it's important if you really want to be a part of the community, and you really want to contribute. This is an easy way to do it, um, and it's it's something that allows your input. It gives you a voice. And it lets you hear what other people say. You know, we tend to go to our homes at night and we know the problems in our area. And we know, you know, even in the North, within the Northwest Command, it's varied, as Kelly was saying. And this is a good way to understand what's truly going on in the city and what, what problems people are facing what issues they have. And it's just a, a very wonderful learning experience. And it's a way to give back to the community. And for me, that was very important. Um, I've lived in Albuquerque since 1975. 
And this is the first time I've been really involved in something like this because I didn't have time when I was working full time. And uh, so I just, I just believe it's a, a truly valuable experience for anybody who wants to get involved. And the CPCs are so welcoming. You know, they don't want a certain kind of person. They're welcoming to everybody. And that to me was very important because there are very many different people that live in Albuquerque. And we need for all of them to be able to trust our police department and, and to feel that they're, they're included in the community. Thank you. And may I say something else too? Um, it's also really fun because you get to meet neighbors, uh, community leaders without throughout uh, that you wouldn't have met before. And then also, you know, I, I'll give you an example. Uh, the Foothills Community Policing Council, we're having a um, kind of like a potluck at the park uh, next month. Um, and, you know, everybody's going to bring food. We're going to keep our social distance because, you know, the COVID's still here and variants, right? So we're going to take our precautions, right? But we're, you know, we have this um, potluck for autumn, like an equinox potluck, right? And we get to know each other and then we help each other and, and, uh, and have fun at the same time, right? And enjoy a nice dinner. And then everybody gets to bring their significant other or their children or their pets. And then you get to form more of a community. And I think that's wonderful. No, that's terrific. That's, that's, a, good, that's a good way to look at it as well. It's, 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 it's as much an opportunity to make connections with other people in the community as it is to make a difference in terms of uh, helping you know, develop policy and procedure for APD. So that's good. Thank you, Idalia. Well, Kelly, I started with you. I'm going to end with you. Um, how does one join their CPC? Well, it's very simple. Uh, you can Google a Community Policing Council Albuquerque. Our website will come up. And at the bottom, there is what's called a statement of interest link in which you fill out your information, you answer a few questions, and your application, we don't call it an application, we call it an interest link, but it's the same thing. That comes back to me. And then, you know, I'll look over it, I'll make sure you are in the right area command, and I'll send it to the appropriate um, chair. And the chair at that point will get your application, look over it, distribute it to the other members. And if there are any positions open on the council, at this point, five of the six councils have positions open. The Foothills is the only one that does not. So uh, they, will, they will vote it and then they'll bring you in at some point in time to meet you um, online at this point. And you'll discuss some issues and you'll talk about what you believe in and uh, what, what your views are and why you wanna join the council. And at that point, they will have a vote and most likely, not, not everyone, but most likely you'll be invited to join. Now, I'd just like to say that as for serving, people say, well, it's going to be a huge time commitment. As Annie said, we have one meeting a month, which is two hours online, and we discuss a very interesting variety of topics from, uh, from the homeless to mental health to uh, what are some of the other ones we've, we've gone into. Um, we have one tonight with the Valley Policing Council, which is going to discuss uh, police officer safety in the wake of what happened last week to the four officers. Uh, a, a whole variety of topics, the violence intervention program in Albuquerque, uh, youthful offenders. We've had a lot of interesting topics and I've learned an awful lot. So we've got one meeting a month and you probably have, will have a second meeting a month in your council, which is another hour and a half. And you may join a committee, which is another an hour and a half. So that's uh, five hours of total meetings, and then maybe you'll do a little work. So I tell people we're talking eight to maybe 12 hours a month maximum of work. Now, if you want to be an officer, that may be 10, 15 hours a week. If you want to be a council chair or a council co-chair, that's a little more work and a little more effort. Mm -hmm. But as to why you should join, well, you have to ask yourself, have you ever complained about any issue dealing with police, with law enforcement, with crime in Albuquerque? If you've complained about these issues, do you want to keep complaining in your living room? Or you, do you want to be heard and have the opportunity to actually change these issues? That's what we do. We file recommendations and the difference between us and your neighborhood uh, council is that uh, APD has to listen to our recommendations. It's part of the CASA, you know. Uh, I speak to 
Chief Medina quite regularly and uh, Superintendent Stanley as to what we're doing and things that we can do and it's better. So this is a position of power, a position of opportunity, and a position where you meet people who are influential and important and you can do things for you and your neighborhood now and in the future. That was beautifully said. I don't think anybody could have said it any better than that, Kelly. Well, thank you. I know, right? Kudos to Kelly. Right on, man. That was great. Thank you all so very much. Uh, Annie Cook, Lieutenant Jennifer Garcia, Balsadio, Kelly Mensa, who's the CPC liaison, Idalia Lechugatana, and Commander Arturo Sanchez, all of you. I am so grateful that you took the time today to talk about the CPCs. Um, I hope that this inspires more residents to go out and join their CPC. Um, I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you all so very much. And I will send you a copy of this recording as soon as it's uploaded. And please let me know if there's anything on my office can do to help spread the word. I'm a big believer in the work that the CPCs do. So uh, please don't hesitate to call on us. And uh, thank you very much for your for your time. Have a great afternoon. Thank you. Uh, nice afternoon, everyone. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you to our attendees as well.